Hey guys, it's Linux Next here. In today's video, we are going to be looking at NT Sync versus F Sync, as uh, NT Sync is finally making its way into the user space area of Wine. As you have it, if you haven't heard, NT Sync was merged into kernel 6.14, so the actual driver is there and ready to go, but the user space isn't fully ready within Wine yet. But there has been some custom Proton runners that have been implementing these early versions of NTSync, and I decided to, uh, well, go and find one, and I have that is rather up to date. It's around two weeks old of a uh, Proton runner, and it's based on Proton GE. And I wanted to see, well, is NTSync actually an improvement over FSync? And if you want to know the answer right now, yes. It is an improvement in the majority of cases, but it's not a major improvement like what the original screenshots were shown when NTSync was versing the other synchronizations, like when there was no synchronization. That's the screenshot that most people have seen. Uh, I'll show it up right now if, if I can find it. Uh, it shows really big gains of FPS, and that is just not the case when you actually verse it against the newer synchronizations that are actually used in Proton today, which the one that is used most today is F-Sync. So I wanted to see, uh, you know, well, can anti-sync actually beat F-Sync? So not am I just going to show the actual benchmarks, but I am also going to show how to install it into Steam so you can use anti-sync. And if we do go to the code section uh, and we go to releases, we can download the ntsync.tar.xz. And if we do download it here, uh, we save it to our downloads, even though we already have it. All right, and if we go to our downloads here or wherever you have downloaded it, you want to extract this zip or tar, and then it's going to create a folder. And we want to copy this folder and we want to paste it, or you can do cut. Uh, we're going to paste it into the .steam compatibility.d folder, so then you can actually use it within Steam. So if we go and we enable our uh, show hidden files on your file manager, uh, for me, I'm using Dolphin. And then we go to .steam, we go steam, compatibility tools .d, and then we paste it into this folder. And then you just need to restart Steam. Then if you actually want to use it, you go onto a game, click properties in your Steam library, go to the compatibilities on here, and we want to select the actual runner. And that's it. It's going to use NTSync by default, so you don't have to use any environment variables. You just launch the game, and it should automatically use it. And you can confirm it in something like MangoHUD. So if we do open up Go Overlay, there is an option for enabling this, so you can see which Wine Sync is being used which is in the extra tab and a short rundown of what this actually does well when it comes to the wine synchronization uh, if we don't use any type of like kind of almost like hacks when it comes to the synchronization or like translation of wine and windows apis if we use none of that we don't use f sync we don't use e sync we just use none uh the performance is really bad because the translation is not actually that great now if we actually use something like eSync, which does have a lot of things supported when it comes to the Windows APIs, but it's also missing a lot of things that are left for that Windows translation within Wine. Uh, it does improve the performance a little bit, or not a little bit, it actually does improve it a lot. But there's a better one called FSync, which both of these are in user space, while NTSync is in the kernel space. FSync uh, does solve a lot more when it comes to the Windows translation between Wine and Windows, but it's not fully done yet. There's still a couple things left when it comes to the synchronization. And this is what NTSync was trying to solve. And with creating NTSync and enabling it default in Wine, what this does is it creates a standard synchronization in why because f-sync and e-sync are more of a hack when it comes to the synchronization and that's why they're not in wine by default and it's why proton uses f-sync and it's like not in wine by default so nt-sync creates that standard synchronization that can be used whenever on any application or game by default. Of course, it can be changed. You can change it to use f-sync or e-sync, but by default, it's going to be nt-sync that solves all of the issues when it comes to 
the synchronization part of Windows 2 Wine or slash Linux. Now, is it actually better than something like F-Sync in today's Proton runners that's already used for many years now when it comes to gaming on Linux? Well, I would say it does improve it overall versus F-Sync. It actually does, but it doesn't always win I've heard that there is faster loading times when it comes to using NT-Sync, and I have seen this in a game like Dirt Rally 2 when loading a new map. It was around a second faster than F-Sync, but when it came to actually trying to replicate that, it wasn't always faster than F-Sync. Sometimes F-Sync was faster. So when it comes to its loading times, like people were saying loading times are faster, I think it has been improved, but it's a bit of uh, F-Sync versus NT-Sync. F-Sync still does a good job on the loading times. But just an example, Overwatch 2. When we look at this right here, I would say this might be margin of error, but we can see 500 versus 481 on the 97th percentile. Now, this is on uh, medium settings on DirectX 12 Ultimate slash VKD3D slash Vulkan, so translations being used here, but not DXVK, which is what used by default. I decided to use VKD3D because, well, I don't want to deal with the shader compilation stuff. It just does it a lot faster on VKD3D. But if we do look at the performance here, uh, we can see that NT-Sync does win versus F-Sync. And looking at the frame timing, uh, it's around the same, I would say. There's not that much of a difference. Sometimes NT-Sync is looking a little bit higher on the frame timing. But as we can see, like this random spike that happened for some reason on, on F-Sync, it doesn't happen on NT-Sync. So we can see here that NT-Sync is, in general, it's doing a better job at maintaining one, uh, most of the time, the FPS, and it might be around the same when it comes to the frame timing, but again, F-Sync is doing a rather good job also. Another game, like Assetto Corsa Competizione, uh, when we look at NT-Sync versus F-Sync on this, and we look at the 97 percentile, it's 128 versus 126. The 1% min is a you know, margin of error. Our average mostly probably margin of error when it came to testing these games uh, i just driven on a the default track that's used on a set of corso and same with uh overwatch i just went into the training and just shot bots and tried to pull my ultimate on um soldier 76. so again we can see here that anti-sync is doing uh just that little bit better uh, but this might be margin of error with a set of Corsa. Then when it comes to the finals on NT-Sync versus F-Sync, we run around in the training and tried to do basically the exact same thing that I did when it came to first testing it with F-Sync. And as we can see here again, the 97 percentile, uh, this time F-Sync is winning when it comes to the FPS uh, on the finals. So you can see the average, a little bit higher, 97 percentile, a little bit higher, 1% min, it seems to be holding it a little bit better. So this is where, um, you know, NT-Sync, it's not in wine yet, so it's still considered experimental. And I think within maybe a couple of months or maybe a year from now, I think uh, NT-Sync will just be overall just way better than F-Sync just when it comes to these types of situations where F-Sync is still able to win out on some cases. And then if we look at something like Marvel Rivals, we can see here uh, NT-Sync does actually a better job and it's I would say a really good job. It's 97% 140 versus 137. It's average 117 versus 115. Again, that might be margin of error, but it is doing a, a rather better job. And same goes with uh, Marvel Rivals. I went into training, selected the same character. I tried to set up at the same area where I first started, and I tried to do the same things. Uh, when it comes to the you know, multiplayer FPS games, trying to get it consistent is rather hard to do. And in something like Dirt Rally 2, which is a game that I quite enjoy on my racing sim stuff, uh, when it comes to F-Sync versus NT-Sync, we can see F-Sync is doing a better job in the 97 percentile. NT-Sync is not far behind. This again might be margin of error. I'm unsure if it's margin of error. It might be just, yeah, NT-Sync's just not being that great and then one other one other fps game frag punk this actually does have a benchmark mode so this is rather accurate i would say we can see uh nt-sync is doing better on the 97 percentile just by a little bit uh one percent mins though f-sync's doing a little bit better might be margin of error once again uh another game black myth wukong uh, on its benchmark mode, uh, we can see, and this is the one that I saw a big gain when I was benchmark. I was like, holy crap, like I didn't even need to look at these statistics.
weeks, I already saw the jump in performance. And as we can see here, and these are all the same settings, I swear to God, same settings. Uh, 97 percentile, 82 FPS on F-Sync, NT sync 106. That's a pretty damn good gain, I would say. Same with the average, 68 versus 98. That is a good gain, I would say, again. And the 1% min, 60 versus 83. That right there, that is a real improvement. And it kind of shows where NT sync might be better in maybe some of the newer games that might use Unreal Engine, maybe. They maybe use just newer things within Windows uh, with those game engines. And when it comes to translation, NT-Sync seems to do a lot better job on the wine synchronization part. But as we can see here with Monster Hunter Wilds, uh, the FPS F-Sync does seem to win here, All NT-Sync does lose by a little bit in that 97 percentile, the average in the 1% min. Uh, this doesn't really seem like a uh, margin of error in my opinion. Uh, this seems pretty like an NT-Sync is just having a worse time at maintaining the FPS, either it be the average 1% min or the peak of 97 percentile. And the last one, Batman Arkham Knight, uh, which does have a benchmark mode. And if we have a look here, uh, NT-Sync does win by a little bit in the 90 percentile in the average and in the one percent min it seems to maintain it a lot better so in the end i would say when it comes to the gaming performance of anti-sync versus f-sync i would say that look anti-sync it is a better solution than f-sync and it solves the rest of the problems that were happening happening with the one synchronization and as we saw with like uh black myth uh wukong like what a, an insane jump in performance like i did the same settings it was medium settings no frame generation was used uh and fsr 3 i'm pretty sure was being used but no frame generation medium settings and as you can see just the jump in performance on nt sync is wild i would say in this case and in some other cases with the other games uh yeah it was a little bit better when it came to when it came to uh, the one percent means the averages in the 97 percentiles and if you do want to learn more about the nt synchronization there is this video by zeb uh she is one of the like core I'm pretty sure one of the core developers who has been working on the nt sync driver getting it to be able to be merged into the kernel and to, for it to be merged into the user space of Vine. So if you want to learn a, a lot more about like uh, what was missing with the other solutions with F-Sync and Async, I will link this down below. It's around 30 minutes long. It's a good uh, video to watch if you want to learn that stuff, which I did try to focus learning it. Of course, most of that stuff goes out of my brain because it's mostly code which i don't understand but if you do understand the concepts of you know different code development uh all these types of synchronization drivers i would definitely watch this video now what issues did i have with nt sync well the biggest one was that games weren't launching uh so i did try this i went and used the regular ge proton the same version of the uh, NT-Sync Proton Runner. And uh, those games were launching, which were Halo Infinite and Cyberpunk 2077. But when using the NT-Sync version of the GE Proton Runner that I found, uh, those games weren't launching properly. Uh, like Cyberpunk 2077, it would launch the um, the red launcher, but it wouldn't go into the game. Uh, Halo Infinite just simply would be sitting there idle and it just wouldn't progress any further. But that was about it when it came to the issues with NT-Sync. And I think over time, when the NT-Sync gets actually merged into the user space, it is going to improve uh, and solve those problems. And you'll be able to just use it by default in something like Proton or Wine. And when it comes to, is Valve going to include NT-Sync into Proton anytime soon? Well, one of the main developers who works at Valve, uh, Pierre Loop, I'm pretty sure that that's how you say his name. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Someone did ask, how will NT-Sync be supported on the Steam Deck? Uh, and then he said, uh, we already include F-Sync, which should be as fast or faster as NT-Sync. We developed NT-Sync as a general solution that can be acceptable in the upstream wine, but there's no urgency in including it in the Deck or SteamOS kernel. So if you've been thinking, uh, when is Valve going to uh, implement NT-Sync into Proton? Well, at this moment, they're not going to do it. And if you've seen the you know, the issues that I've listed and some of the performance things, F-Sync still does a good job. And it, well, it does a better job because it's able to launch other different games running under Proton. 
So that is the conclusion of this video. I would like to know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, do you think that anti-sync is better than something like f-sync? I'd really like to know. So if you guys did like, uh, you know, watching this video, definitely give it a like. And if you really enjoyed it, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you to my supporters. I'll show a text across the screen. Thank you for giving me money every single damn month. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.